Hello, we are NBC PTV, the creators of Clean Eats. Now our group members consist of myself, Tandy, and then we also have Patrick, Brian, Cameron, Dylan, and Kenny. Now the general purpose of this TV show is to show how a manager goes through the trial and errors of running a business. Now with this, we have implemented many concepts that we've learned over the course of the semester and we apply those to our characters to show how they not only grow as characters but how they can solve a lot of these issues that come about. We really wanted to show a manager who struggles with morals towards personal issues because a huge um, aspect of this show, kind of a theme, is showing sort of a family that grows together within this business and a lot of personal ties cause issues within this show. You know, we wanted to show that there are a lot of decisions that need to be made within this TV show and how these can affect personal relationships with the employees and the managers and also personal relationships with family members as well. So, Clean Eats is a restaurant located in St. Petersburg, Florida. The idea came from a food chain called Fresh Kitchen because I was a very big fan of just the assembly line, you know, type of work. And also, I, we really wanted to promote kind of a healthy lifestyle with this. So, Clean Eats serves fresh and tasty food that's quality and organic. Um, all, most of the food is, well, yeah, most of the food is freshly made. You know, we have a supplier we get the food from, and this kind of ties in to our first episode. So the plot will stem from that. You know, Scott, has the manager, has been taking food stock and giving it to his brother Jax, who is in serious debt from a gambling problem. So right off the bat, we already showed that this TV show has personal issues, but also professional issues that have to be solved within the business. So, let's dive into our character introductions. We have Scott. Scott comes from a broken home and has a lot of family issues. You know, his brother Jax, he has a very deep gambling problem that's cost him a lot in his life. And Scott is really trying to help him p pick up the pieces while also trying to maintain the business of Clean Eats and be a professional manager that he knows he can be. But that's kind of Scott's mindset. You know, he's very strong. Um, he's incredibly hardworking and he's very passionate about the business. You know, he has a very strong perceptual distortion but he also has ethical lapses and this will tie into our first episode on how a lot of the decisions will be made and one last thing Scott strongly believes in the moral rights approach you know clean eats being a very family oriented business um, they just they all try to treat each other as family members So up next, we have Ted, the shift supervisor of Clean Eats. Now, Ted, he's very hardworking and a stickler for the rules. You know, he handles a lot of situations with a program decision and standard operating procedures. Up next, we have Jax, Scott's older brother. <sighs> so Jax, he is notorious for having a gambling problem and he pressures Scott a lot of the time for food because he can't afford it. This man has already lost multiple jobs. He's lost basically his family due to his gambling problem. You know, he has no motivation, no desire to really do anything but game. But his downfall is that he has a very manipulative personality. You know, he utilizes intuitive decision making, which he'll choose the alternative that best fits his interests because he always thinks that he can fall back on Scott. Up 
Next, we have Rick, the district manager of Clean Eat. Rick is an interesting character. You know, his mother died of breast cancer, so his inspiration for the restaurant kind of stems off of that. He wanted to create something that's healthy so that, you know, people, in a sense, can feel good after they eat. You know, but the death of his mother also brings a very sometimes aggressive approach to clean eats, specifically, you know, the store in St. Pete where all of our characters are. You know, he's very hard on Scott because he just, he wants Scott to show clean eats for what it really is, you know, just a phenomenal business that wants to just promote positivity. Um, but sometimes that can cause a big issue between the two, you know, to where they're butting heads yelling at each other but rick also finds a way to be a really good guy he follows a very utilitarian type mindset and last but not least we have erica she is the newly promoted ship supervisor you know she's a phenomenal student and worker she attends usf st petersburg um however she can get detached at times you know she's Sometimes focusing on other things and kind of forgets that she should be working on, you know, this. But she really follows Ted's guidance and sees him and Scott as role models. You know, just like Ted, she looks up to Scott. You know, all the employees love Scott. He's just an overall really good guy. And Erica kind of gains her personality from them. So... This leads us into episode one. Episode one, right off the bat, has issues. You know, um, Scott has been giving food stock to his brother Jack so that Jax can, you know, live and have food and be nourished. But with that being done, Ted and Erica notice that there is food stock missing one day when they're doing a food count. So they bring it to Scott's attention and... You know, Scott pulls them aside and tells them exactly what he's been doing. Now the issue is, he can either go and tell Rick, the district manager, what's been going on, or he can very quickly go spend his own money on, you know, the food that they need, which is buffalo sauce and chicken. So this is where... We tie in the concepts of ethical lapse, where, you know, Scott must decide, should he keep giving food away to his brother, or should he, you know, try to be truthful to his business, and, you know, kind of tell his brother, it's time for you to figure out your life and figure out what you need to do. In episode two... We focus on aspects of time management by implementing alternative solutions. We find the two uh, characters, Ted and Erica, uh, running the business for the day while Scott is out on other business ventures. Basically, there's a new promotion going on at Clean Eats. Ted is running everything, and he has a lot of eyes on him today because he's trying to be promoted. So with that being said, um, he goes to Erica to make sure that everything is going efficiently with the promotion that everything's being restocked, everything's being properly refrigerated, while he takes care of everything else. So Erica thinks that if she, you know, doesn't have to refrigerate them, that she could just keep coming back and refilling them since everything's going pretty quickly. But after a while, customers stop coming, you know, the promotional goods aren't being consumed, and most of the stuff is left out sitting in the sun. Ted notices this and brings it to Erica's attention, which leads to her getting in some trouble, but she is able to implement alternative solutions to fixing this problem, and ultimately, the promotion ends up going successfully, Ted is promoted, and Erica gets to keep her job and still has a very positive look on her from all of her coworkers. So, in conclusion... For our group, we found, you know, that management is a series of activities and operations which include planning, organizing, directing, and controlling. We, you know, were able to find this within our textbook, which we referenced here. 
And as a group, we just believe, you know, today management begins with building relationships and trust with team members and managers, and that's how they derive their power to lead. And from the respect and trust their team shows them, that really helps. You know, that's something in our group that we've held dear to is making sure that, you know, no one's left out, making sure that there's always feedback and that there's always constructive criticism that, you know, leads to positive outcomes or the work. Now, for a reflection overall, you know, our team has functioned very well while working towards goals. Sometimes people will take more of a lead, but that's just some of our personalities. I know for myself, you know, I just love getting work done instantly, and sometimes I'll kind of take hold of the ropes. But it's great because everyone else will do that too sometimes. And it just has made this so easy and it's made everything flow so perfectly. So we have our group reflections. You know, Cameron, you know, has learned a lot about being a leader. He usually tends to just do work on his own, but he's kind of found a way to, you know, implement his work and also find ways to work together with us. You know, same with Kenny. You know, this class has been interesting for him. You know, he's an assistant manager at a retail store, and he's kind of been able to see how these concepts fit into be being a manager. Brian, you know, another great experience with this group. You know, no one in the group has had issues or been thrown under the bus as a result of communication issues. Everyone's always been very strong with communicating. Um, as for myself, I've, you know, learned a lot of different things in terms of what it's like to be a manager, and I think a lot of these concepts have been extremely helpful, especially in my personal life, and I've found that I've applied this, you know, to a new job that I recently got, and I think that overall this class is really, really good for just learning what it's like to be a leader. You know, Patrick, he says this course has been a lot of fun illustrative, you know, experience into the world of management. You know, he notices, though, there's a lot more things that go into the management process, but when working together, you know, you're able to accomplish a lot of great things. So our recommendation for any future students that want to take this class, you know, just make sure to stay up to date with assignments. Always be checking Canvas. Um, check your group page especially because I know our group we were posting announcements almost every day about work you know make sure to submit your files and just make sure to be attentive you know do your part of the work you know it's not fair to let someone else do all the work and then no one else try to have a part in it you know and you know when the professor and our TA when they're giving you advice and criticism you know, on your work, don't take it the wrong way. Try to take some of those, you know, examples that they're giving you and apply that to your work because overall they're just trying to help, you know. That's what it is at the end of the day. And it's going to help you not only have your work be more successful, but it's also going to help you grow as a person and you can kind of apply some of their advice to your own personal life. And these are our references. We just used our management textbook. And, well, that's all. I really hope uh, you've enjoyed your experience with Clean Eats thus far, and this has been a phenomenal semester. Thank you so much.